Hello everyone. Have you ever had that moment where you questioned whether ghosts and the supernatural are real? Well, get ready to have your beliefs challenged because today, we're delving into a story that might just make you a believer. Imagine a seemingly ordinary family moving into a house with a past so chilling, it'll make you second guess what goes bump in the night. That's right, we're about to uncover the spine-tingling tale of the Snedeker family and their bone-chilling encounters in Southington, Connecticut. So buckle up because after hearing this, you might just find yourself looking over your shoulder in the dark. Please take a moment to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more fascinating stories like these. The Snedeker family had a tough time. Their oldest kid, Philip, got cancer when he was just 14. Doctors said he might only live six months unless they tried some intense treatments. It meant driving eight hours every day to a hospital in Connecticut. The family realized that driving eight hours every day for Philip's treatments was too much. It made Philip weaker, and they knew they needed to get him closer to his doctors. Carmen talked to her husband about moving to Connecticut. He agreed. Alan got a job transfer to Connecticut. Carmen went ahead to find a place for them to live. It was tough finding a big enough house for their six kids and within their budget. Landlords kept saying no. But then she saw a house with a for rent sign. Even though it was still being fixed up, Carmen loved it. It had four bedrooms and was close to the hospital. Carmen was worried it might be too expensive. But when she asked the owner, the rent was just right. They signed the agreement and started moving in. Finally, after all the struggles, they had a chance for things to be normal again, especially for Philip. As they moved in when they checked the basement, they found a small room they hadn't seen before. It looked like it used to be a funeral home. Carmen was shocked and didn't want to move the kids to the house, but Alan convinced her they had no other choice. They had already signed the agreement and spent all their money on Philip's treatments. Even though Carmen was hesitant, Alan convinced her to continue with the move. They promised to keep the house's dark past a secret from their kids. The landlord removed some of the funeral equipment but left behind some tables and a freezer. As the family settled in, Philip and the other kids explored the house. Carmen started mopping the floors, but something strange happened. The water she used turned thick and dark red, like blood. She brushed it off as stress. Meanwhile, Philip went into the basement and felt a chilling presence. He heard a voice calling his name from a room. Terrified, he ran upstairs and told his mother they needed to leave because he didn't feel safe. At first, Carmen thought Philip's fear was just because of his illness and adjusting to the new house. But Philip's condition worsened. They even asked a priest to pray for Philip's healing. But things didn't get better. The whole family had moved into the former funeral home, but they hadn't told the kids about its past. Philip, however, had somehow figured it out on his own. Carmen thought it was because he was so sick that he could sense things others couldn't. With Alan back at work during the week, Carmen was left to manage the house and six kids alone. She tried to keep things normal, but strange things started happening. One day, their youngest daughter saw a scary figure in her room and ran to her mother. Carmen checked, but found nothing unusual, thinking it was just the boys playing a prank. When she confronted the boys, they denied knowing anything about it. Confused, Carmen brushed it off and went back to cooking dinner. But at night, the boys in the basement couldn't sleep. They kept hearing and seeing strange things, like someone moving behind closed doors. As the days went by, things got worse. Philip's illness made him see even more frightening things. Finally, the boys couldn't take it anymore and told their mother about the man they saw in the basement. Carmen tried to reassure them, thinking it was just their imagination. But deep down, she knew something wasn't right. As the days passed, strange occurrences continued in the house. Carmen, busy with dinner preparations one evening, found that all the dishes she had set on the table had vanished without a trace. Feeling bewildered, she couldn't dismiss this experience as easily as the others. Meanwhile, Philip's younger brother Bobby sensed something was wrong too. He heard whispers and saw a figure in the basement. Terrified, he ran to his mother who was also shaken from her own experiences. Together, they went to investigate but found nothing. Carmen, who had never believed in ghosts before, began to reconsider. Alan arrived the next day, just as a winter storm hit. 
Concerned about the kid's fears, he decided to address the issue at breakfast. He admitted that they were living in an old funeral home, but reassured them there was nothing to be afraid of. Despite their protests, Alan insisted it was just their imaginations. He asked Philip to set an example for the other kids and not to scare them with ghost stories. Philip's treatments drained the family's funds and strange happenings continued, including crucifixes disappearing from the house. The nightly disturbances became more frequent, with Philip and Bobby seeing the man in the lab room and other apparitions. Despite their terror, Alan dismissed their experiences once again, forcing them to go back to bed. Frustrated by not being believed, the boys began leaving their lights on at night, costing the family even more money. Alan, overwhelmed by the mounting debt, removed all but one light bulb from each of the kids' rooms in an attempt to save money. At night, the boys were awakened by their sister flicking non-existent light switches, but they saw her upstairs, fast asleep. They realized something sinister could take the form of family members. Meanwhile, Philip heard a voice calling from the lab room. Tired of living in fear, he decided to confront it. Inside, he faced a man with blood-filled eyes who whispered about the house's past. After this encounter, Philip's personality changed. He isolated himself in the basement, pushing away his brother. Despite his remission, Philip seemed indifferent. Later, their niece Teresa arrived, noticing Philip's strange behavior. He confided in her about the paranormal activity, feeling isolated and unheard. He shared terrifying experiences, including a demonic presence urging him to harm his family. Philip's hatred spread tension in the household. Daily fights erupted, especially between Philip and his father, who resented him for their financial troubles. Philip's diary revealed nightly visits from the demon, pushing him to do unspeakable things. Philip confided in Teresa about seeing trapped souls in the basement. Suddenly he attacked her, fleeing into her uncle's arms. Teresa, disturbed by the dysfunction, wept in her bed. Carmen gave her a rosary for comfort, which she wore that night. The Parker family believed something evil lived in their house and wanted it gone. They called their priest for help. He listened to their scary encounters, but told them to forget about it, and it would stop. But it didn't stop. Karen, a family member, reached out to demon experts Ed and Lorraine Warren. After arriving at the house, they immediately sensed a demonic presence. With their guidance, a team documented the phenomena, enduring eerie experiences themselves. As the attacks intensified, Carmen became the primary target, tormented by guilt and fear. These experts believed the house was infested with a bad spirit. They needed the Catholic Church to approve an exorcism, which is a rare thing, so they moved into the house to record proof. After weeks of investigating, the church finally approved the exorcism. A priest named Father Richard came to do it. During the exorcism, Father Richard felt like he was being attacked by something he couldn't see. However, in the end, the family felt free from the evil presence. They believed their faith had helped get rid of it, and it was finally over. After the exorcism, they packed their belongings and moved out, hoping to leave the nightmare behind. Yet lingering doubts remain. The involvement of the Warrens, well-known demonologists, adds a layer of intrigue and credibility to the narrative, especially considering their reputation all over the world. Ultimately, the interpretation of events is left open-ended, leaving room for individual beliefs and perspectives on the supernatural. It's a story that raises questions about the nature of evil, the power of faith, and the human capacity to confront and overcome darkness. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to click the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell. Until next time, stay cautious and remain vigilant.